going to ask you to join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, God, our rock and our redeemer. And we're so thankful once again that we can gather this morning to, to be together in worship and to hear this invitation, this calling to follow you, even during uncertain times. So speak to us and thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, I don't know if I'm the only one who feels that everything seems to be changing every day. Um, it seems that if it was just a few weeks ago when I was just trying to be a regular pastor, trying to learn how to preach and write engaging and entertaining sermons, but in the past three weeks, not only I have had to learn how to do those things, but I also have had to learn how to be a TV evangelist. Um, I have been learning that I need to make sure that I'm making eye contact with the camera to pretend that all of you are here. Um, I have to make sure that my, my hair looks good for the camera. I mean, there are all these things that I'm beginning to learn. I'm, by the way, I hope my, my hair is good, is good this morning. But um, in many ways, life comes at you fast. Prepare or not, life comes at you fast. And I'm still trying to, to really understand how we even got to this point. And I know that I'm not the only one who's going through this learning curve and this place of trying to acquire new skills. Um, many of you right now are homeschooling. I don't know that you thought that you would be homeschooling at this point in your lives. And so mom and dad, how, how are your math and science skills doing? I hope you're doing well. How is your algebra these days? Because it doesn't matter who you are in one way or another, we are in a season of learning, of change. We are all trying to, re to figure out how this new normal is going to be for all of us. And so how about also all the new words that we're beginning to use every day in this, in this new time? Quarantine, social distancing, elbow bumps, flatten the curve, shelter at home, 10 at a time, no more than five, no bread, no toilet paper, no hand sanitizer, two per person, special hours for shopping for people over 60. I mean, what else do we need to learn these days? We are all in this place, and I'm just wondering, how did we get here so fast? And yet, if you really think about it, change, that's really the only thing that is the constant in our lives. Change, the change that, that is being forced upon us or the one we choose for our lives is always something that is going to come to us. And you know, as the saying goes, um, the only constant in life besides death and taxes is change. Because we don't know what the future will bring except that we know that something's going to change. Author uh, Brene Brown points out that humanity, we as humanity, we have survived uh, throughout millennia. The only way we have been able to survive is by embracing change. You know, in many ways, we don't like to change, but only those who embrace change are able to survive and even thrive. Which is really where I want to go this morning, as we heard in the gospel stories about Peter. How he got to this place of so much change as we encounter him today and the, at the end of the time that he was able to spend Jesus. I'm sure that at some point, Peter on his own began to wonder, how did I get to this place where I am one of the few people who get to see in person the resurrected Christ? I'm sure that at some point, Peter thought to himself, how did I get to this point where you, Jesus, you're calling me the rock. You are calling me to be the foundation of your church after all the promises that I have broken, after all my backsliding. How is it possible that you're inviting me to do this? How did I get to this point? Life has come to him fast too. And here's the thing. Although Jesus is calling Peter the rock, Peter was nowhere close to being the perfect rock. You can say that Peter was not smooth. He was not a smooth stone. 
He was not carved or anything like that. He was more like a rag that needed constant polishing and refinement. Because in many ways, although we like to point at Peter as someone who was really difficult and challenging, you know what? Peter is very much like you and me. If you remember his story as we heard this morning, we remember that Peter was Andrew's brother. And we remember that Andrew was the first one to follow Jesus. And as Andrew received this invitation to follow Jesus, he goes immediately to talk to his brother Peter, who both of them are fishermen, by the way. And as, as Peter hears this invitation to follow Jesus, the story tells us that he drops everything. He hears from Jesus, follow me. And that's what he did. He leaves everything behind because they left everything to follow the teacher who believed in both of them. Later in his story, as we continue to see Peter developing, we see that Peter did amazing things. He is the first one to recognize and proclaim Jesus as, the, as Lord and Savior. And almost as in the same breath, almost as if in the same breath, and against Jesus' advice also, Peter takes a sword and cuts off the ear of this soldier who has been sent to arrest Jesus. You go from this beautiful moment with, with Jesus to this really difficult moment with Peter. We can also safely say that the last week of Jesus' life, it was really difficult for Peter. We find him denying Jesus. We find him lying. We find him abandoning him, the disciples and Jesus. He's afraid and angry at the entire world. And really, you could say that he's a complete and utter mess. Maybe like you and I are right now. And yet, what we see from Jesus is that Jesus is able to handle his fear. Jesus is able to handle his anger and sees in Peter goodness. The capacity to grow and to change in the middle of changing circumstances. In the midst of uncertain times, Jesus sees that Peter can still be the rock. It's just like that first time when Peter heard the words from Jesus, follow me. Jesus never stopped believing in him. Now we see Jesus at the rock at the end of his life, at the end of Jesus' presence with the disciples. We see Jesus and Peter and the disciples having breakfast. And then at the end of that breakfast, Jesus comes straight to Peter and he asks him three questions reminiscent of the three times that Jesus denied Jesus. And he asked him three very simple but very important questions. Do you love me, Peter? And Peter says, yes. Then feed my lambs. Do you love me, Peter? Yes. Then tend my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Yes. Then feed my sheep. There's so much to unpack here. But what is clear is that even after Peter failed, Jesus' love for him did not change. Jesus still loves him and trusts him to become the rock, the foundation upon which the church of Christ will be built. Peter is still the one, no matter what has happened with him. We all know, yes, there is room for growth. Yes. Peter will continue to make mistakes. Yes, the world might be changing around Peter, but Jesus' love for him remains the same. What this means, means for all of us is that just like Peter, we will become agents of love and grace for a world in need, for a world that is constantly changing. It means that we will learn that even with our imperfections, Jesus has decided to build his church in us and with us. It means that in a time when we cannot be physically together, we remember that the real church is not a building, but the people. It's always been the people. The building was never meant to take the place of you and me in sharing the work of forgiveness and feeding and caring. Our faith, our actions, our words is what make the church alive in these trying times of doubt and separation. I know, I know life has come fast at us, 
but it also comes as an opportunity to allow God to polish the imperfections and rough edges of our lives, to make the changes necessary for God's love to flow freely through us so that the world may see that the church, the body of Christ, you and me will continue to feed the lambs and sheep with God's love and grace. Don't forget that. No matter where you are and how much life has changed in the past three weeks, God still continues to trust you and me to be the rock, to be the church. Amen. Thanks be to God.